So I recently made a video stating that Christians don't believe in the God of the Bible. So hear me out. Let me tell you what I meant by that. So I said in that video that either Christians do not read the Bible or they do not comprehend the Bible or they lie to themselves or they don't believe in the God of the Bible. So I'm going to keep this video in Christian context as much as I can because it is hard to keep using the same wording, the same jargons. It is hard to do that once you know the truth. So I'm just going to try my best to do that. What I mean by that is Christians will tell you God is loving and God is caring and I'm going to pray for you and God is going to open the doors for you and God is going to make a way for you and this is going to happen and God is going to do that. And yet, if you read this Bible, God is not all loving. God is not all caring. So that's what I meant by either they lie to themselves or they're not reading the Bible or they can't comprehend the Bible or they're talking about a different God. That's what I mean. So the first one is a question I'm going to respond to because I believe that it is a sincere question. So let me find the question. So the question states, Melanie, what is your opinion, interpretation of a true Christian compared to a false one? So for me, true Christianity is when, and I'm going to keep this in the Christian context as much as I possibly can. So, so true Christianity is when a person follows Jesus because Christians believe Jesus is the Christ, which is the Messiah. Most Christians believe that Jesus is God and not, the, not just the Son of God. So I'm going to keep it within the Christian context. In order to follow Christ, you will have to follow all the rules of Christ. Breaking one of them means that you are not a Christ follower, which means that you are not a true Christian. So Christ came and he stated this, don't think that I have come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Laws come from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the Hebraic Bible. The religion in the Hebraic Bible is Judaism. The New Testament is, is where we find Jesus centered. That New Testament is the European Bible and the religion for that is Christianity. The Old Testament and the New Testament is two different religions, two different sections of peoples and their beliefs. In the Old Testament, there's multiple gods and multiple beliefs. We have to deal with each one accordingly. So a true Christian will obey Christ. Christ talks about the law. I'm going to talk about one of the most popular ones. Thou shall not commit adultery. Jesus says, I say, if you have lusted in your heart, you have already committed adultery. Jesus made the law harsher and harder to follow. But if you've ever done that, you have committed adultery, which means that you are not a true follower of Christ because you have to obey all of those laws. That's just one example. The next one, when Old Testament says an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth, Jesus said, if your enemy hits you, turn the other cheek and let him hit you there as well. And even if it's not literal, it means don't defend yourself. And it could also mean do not verbally defend yourself. Let someone abuse you. Jesus made it harsher and harder to follow these laws. So Jesus also said, render to Caesar what is Caesar. That just means to give to the government and obey the government, whatever the government is asking for, whatever the government is asking for. So if you have not been obeying any of these at all, you are not a true Christian. That's, it's more, way more. I can go through a lot more. Now you say compared to a false one. I don't believe there are false Christians. I just believe there's misinformed and miseducated people who believe that they're Christians. Because educated people, people who, and when I mean by educated people, I mean people who take the Bible for what it is and actually study it, look at the words in the Bible, define those words, go look for the origins of those words, and then come back and put it in biblical context. It doesn't make sense. So you don't need to be a Bible scholar. You just need to be honest with yourself when reading the Bible. That is all. Okay, so I hope that answered that part. So hold on. Let me grab the rest of the question. You said, um, also, have you ever had a personal encounter with God, our creator? If so, do you mind sharing your story or encounter or conversation? So I've been a Christian all my life. 
it's hard to depart from that um, because I do follow some of the teachings of Jesus and I do follow some of the, the teachings of Paul. I do follow some of the teachings, but I don't follow it in a Christian context. Um, however, when I was a devout Christian, meaning I grew up in uh, a church, my aunt would take me to church three to four times a week. Um, I got baptized when I was around 10, but I remember going to church at about five or six, and I stopped going to church in 2021. I was one of those who had a physical Bible, <laughs> and uh, up until 2021, I still had a physical Bible. I wrote down scriptures and everything, and I came home, and I would uh, research. I would look at definitions of the words. I wouldn't just take a pastor at his word because I was taught that um, if Adam wouldn't have taken Eve at her word, and did his own research, he would have. we wouldn't be in this situation now. So I don't take pastors and people and teachers, I don't take them at their word, I researched myself. So that started my journey to deconstructing and then the light just came on and everything is today present. I don't like to say history, but everything is present. I've had multiple encounters with what I thought was God. Um, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Now that I know none of that is real. Now that I know none of that is true. Now that I have come full circle to that, outside of the church, I've had those same encounters. I've never prayed, I haven't prayed in Jesus' name. I haven't prayed to the Christian God and I've still had those same type of encounters. Hope that helps. And you said, if not, wouldn't you like to have one getting to know him for your own personal benefit and pleasure and then for us all? Well, according to the Bible, I know everything I know about this God and this God is a demiurge and a murderer. Um, this God has human emotions. This God is toxic. This God is a narcissist. The people that this God came to couldn't win with this God. No way. Couldn't win. Think about it. First, God stated, I don't like the people that I made, so I'm going to uh, start all over again. More questions right there. Way more questions. Like, how could you be an all-knowing God and not know that your creation was corrupt? First of all, how could you be a perfect God and create an imperfect creation? Just way more questions. If you actually read it, it's way more questions. Let's take Job, for example. Job was perfect and upright. This is an example that you could be perfect and you could be upright in the sight of God. You could do everything you're asked. And this God will tell Satan to just destroy your entire life. And when questioned about it, God told Satan, you have made me, you have influenced me, you have provoked me to destroy Job without cause. Yes, then God turns around in that verse, gaslights Satan, or is Satan the one that made God do all the things? And Christians will tell you that it's because Job got prideful. That scripture tells you that is not true. Job wasn't prideful, unless God lied in that scripture as well. So, Having an encounter with this God is scary. And having an a relationship with this God will keep you on your toes. Either you obey or you're going to hell. And even if you do obey, this God at any moment can send Satan to destroy you for no reason at all. So I don't want to know any more about this God. I don't want to serve the Christian God. Okay, I hope that helps your question. So let's get to the comments. All right, so the comments is, it doesn't contradict itself once one starts to truly understand the holy word okay so i get this a lot um the bible is great at interpreting what's spiritual and what's physical when uh peter and the disciples in the boat and jesus was walking on water peter said it's a spirit so the bible knows how to tell the difference between what's spiritual and what's physical so if the scriptures all of them are spiritual the bible knows how to say that and talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Bible knows how to differentiate which is spiritual and what isn't. So, going back to the, it doesn't contradict itself. If your premises is stating that I need to understand it from a spiritual perspective, then you're wrong. Because again, the Bible knows how to differentiate between what's spiritual and what's literal. The Bible is very contradictive. And you only have to be honest with yourself. Once you're honest with yourself and realize that if it was spiritual, then nothing, nothing that has been promised to you is not real. It's all spiritual. 
Meaning that when Jesus said you could ask anything in my name and I would give it to you, that's not real either. So your prayers can't be answered in this lifetime either. It's spiritual. It means after you are after you've expired, then you get all of that. So once again, you only have to be honest with yourself. Okay, let me find the next one. This one says God can trump his own laws. He's God. Stop putting a limit on him. There's no limit. The God of this Bible has proven throughout the Bible that it's not all powerful, it's not all knowing, it's not all caring, and it's not all loving. And with a mindset like that, then that means that God is unfalsifiable. Because all people who think like this is going to say it's spiritual. When you're backed in a corner and you can't show proof, it's spiritual. And God takes the wise to confound the foolish or the foolish to confound the wise. And that type of thinking keeps you stuck. It keeps you stranded. The moment things go wrong in your life, it's the devil's fault. And if things keep going wrong, you question God. God, why is this happening to me? And then you got to pray harder because the only reason why it's happening is because you're in sin. And then it's all these excuses. It's all these, and then if you get something that you've worked hard for and you get something that you've prayed for, you'll say, won't he do it? And you'll give praises to God. You don't take accountability for it. You don't take responsibility for it. And you don't hold other people who have wronged you and offend you accountable. Christianity and this mindset that you have keep you stuck. So you uh, said, there's only one true living God, Yahshua. So Jesus is not God. Jesus never said he is God. You said, I have no idea what God you are talking about. That's because you don't read the Bible. That's because you can't comprehend the Bible or because you're lying to yourself. You said, I believe in Jesus Christ, not structured religion. Jesus Christ is organized religion. Someone constructed Jesus Christ. He is organized. So then you proceeded to list John 1 through 5 as if I've never read or seen this before. This is what I mean by Christians not comprehending what they read or just playing lying to themselves. Okay. Because you think the word is Jesus. Let me stop and show you what the word is. So I did some research like I always do. And we're going to start with John 1. You said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So I don't know if you can see this. But according to John 1, W-O-R-D is a word or saying. Also means an account which one gives by word of mouth. It's not a person. It's not Jesus. I can keep going, but, but I just want you to see that. So you can go look it up yourself. I can give you my information. I'll put it somewhere on the screen. And that's what I mean. Christians just throw scriptures at people to weaponize the text to make their point valid or make themselves heard because they don't want to come to the conclusion that they've been hoodwinked, that they've been duped, they've been lied to, and they've been manipulated. I am not your enemy. I know the truth hurts, but the truth also makes you free. And since I am no longer under the guise of Christianity and practicing these awful things, I have much profound freedom. Let's see if I can answer some more. Okay, and then you violated me. You said that you didn't, but you, without my permission, because if you take it upon yourself to do something for someone without their permission is a violation, you prayed to the Father. You said, you said, Melanie, I prayed to the Father that you receive. No, no. I don't know what Father you're praying to. I don't know what God that is. And if you're talking about the Christian God, I don't believe in that God. So you're violating my rights. Don't do that. Don't do that to people. Unless someone asks for that, don't do that to people. You can't claim to know all Christians. There are true believers no matter what some people think. So I think I've answered what I meant in this video. I think I've answered that. So what I want to say now is survey, question, read, recite, review, and research for yourselves. Don't take someone else's word for it and do not go into this book in the guise of Christianity. Because when you think from a Christian concept, your mind and your view is narrowed. 
you can't think outside the box, which means you can't understand anything else besides that. And you always make the excuse. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. There's no contradictions. If you understand, you have to have the Holy Spirit to understand that. That is a lie to keep you depressed, oppressed, and suppressed. 